Jedi. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Shalhoub. Let's welcome our guests. She's been called the millennial master of the universe, which I believe makes her a female reboot of He-Man. CEO of the Marketing Zen Group, Shama Hyder. Okay, let's start the show. The presidential election could hinge on this. Was Donald Trump rude to Miss Universe 20 years ago? Alicia Mikado says after she gained weight following her pageant win in 1996, Trump nicknamed her Miss Piggy, Miss Housekeeping, and Miss Eating Machine. <laughs> All nice names. And he forced her to work out in front of reporters. Hillary Clinton brought up Trump's alleged fat shaming during Monday's debate, and her campaign released an ad featuring Mikado talking about how his words hurt her. Bottom line, she's the perfect advocate for Hillary, right? You were accused of driving a getaway car from a murder scene. You were never charged with this. The judge in the case also said you'd threaten to kill him. Okay, she was once accused of serving as her boyfriend's murder accomplice and threatened to kill a judge. But Mikado quickly put the speculation to rest. I just want to give you a chance to address these reports that the Trump surrogates are talking about. He can say whatever he wants to say. I don't care. You know, I have my past. Of course, everybody has. Everybody have a past. And I'm not uh, a saint girl. Wow. Uh, Michael Malice, I think it's Machado, but, uh, you know, I'm not too careful with that. Is it Machado? I think it is. Machado. That's what I've been, that's what I've been told. Careful. All right, it's all right to mispronounce names every once in a while. Michael Malice, could you tell me <laughs> what uh, what's up with this uh, with this lady? Is this going to hurt Trump? All of a sudden, I mean, I you know, I, I thought it was going to hurt him, but now she she seems to be a bit of a mess. Well, first, first of all, she gained like eighty pounds, right? So yeah. if I'm used to fat people killing and they're killing themselves with you know type two diabetes, you know, that's what I was worried about. But in all seriousness, if you're going to be a beauty pageant contestant, you're there to be judged on your looks, but you're also going to be judged on your poise. And that means you speak well in interviews and you speak kindly of others and being a hatchet woman for you know the wicked witch of the west wing is not exactly in keeping with the beauty pageant standards well she is not a saint girl she is <laughs> she's already said that i thought that was so funny because to me it's like i'm not a saint girl because i have a cupcake instead of going to the gym yeah. not because i've been accused of <laughs> helping someone murder someone. Yeah, she didn't seem to want to deny those charges no, right no well she was accused shama of of calling the judge and threatening him but i think that's just the way they do things down there Mm -hmm. It is Venezuela. <laughs> is it? Wow. Oh, this Down happened in there. Venezuela. I think well, Venezuela, yes. In yes. Venezuela, I thought it was here. No, it's Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Why are we judging you on American standards? Listen, sometimes you got to kill a judge in Venezuela. This is how it goes. No, just threaten. Threaten, you. threaten. 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 Condoms or toilet paper. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, look, it's tough. I mean, even but even back then, this was we're talking about the 90s. This yes. when <laughs> the 90s. The 90s. Remember the 90s when you could kill judges? <laughs> I'm so nostalgic. I don't, I don't think he can win. Shama, you know, he's people say he's got to watch it. That he's a hothead, and they say he's got a temperament problem. But then when he doesn't come out swinging, they say, oh look, he let Hillary get away with it. Yeah, I don't think Trump can win in, in the public rhetoric, right? Like, mm -hmm. if he does one thing, it's like too far to the left. If he does one thing, it's too far to the right. Yeah. So I think he's just got to stick to his basics. And he did that during the debate. Yeah, and I think he's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm a little worried now because he said he's going to come out swinging next time. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, moving on. It's not just celebrities who are against Trump. It's also celebrity cruises. Far from the talk of building walls. Far from the threats of keeping people out. Far from the rhetoric of fear is a world of differences. Differences that expand and enrich us. Because, after all, our lives aren't made better when we close ourselves off to the world. They're made better when we open ourselves up to it. Celebrity Cruises. Well, apparently the ad isn't just an attack on Trump. The CEO of Celebrity said, quote, It's in response to the rhetoric around the world. And she isn't worried about losing passengers, noting anybody that truly looks at this and says we're not going to sail on celebrity again, they're probably not sailing on celebrity. You know, there's one celebrity cruise that I want to take. 
The editors of the Weekly Standard invite you to join them for our December 2016 post-election cruise to the beautiful Caribbean. No. Shama, what do you think about this celebrity cruise? I think it's obviously an anti-Trump ad, but... Uh, I think it's brilliant marketing is what it is. Like, the marketer in me is like, high-five celebrity. Really? Right? Because any other point in time, it's just an ad. No one pays that much attention to it. But they do it now, right? They play off the Trump rhetoric. And guess what? We're talking about it right here. Look how much play they're getting. If You're I'm right. their CMO... I'm giving myself a raise. <laughs> but aren't, what do you about the idea that Trump fans, they're very sensitive, we know that. I mean, you see them all over the place. They're going to boycott celebrity. Yeah, but for how long, right? That might last for a couple of months, but oh, after a while, they're over it while the celebrity brand is being talked about. Wow, that is interesting. I didn't look at it that way. Is reaching Mars closer than we think? On Tuesday, tech billionaire Elon Musk unveiled his plan to colonize the red planet and save humanity. Musk says we have two options, stay on Earth and eventually be wiped out by some doomsday event, or head out to space and become, quote, a space-faring multi-planet species. His goal, get humans to Mars by 2024. On board a $10 billion rocket, his company, SpaceX, is developing. Each spaceship would take 100 passengers on the journey with trips planned every couple years when Earth and Mars pass close to each other. For anyone interested, Musk describes the selection process for the first potential colonists. It would be basically, are you prepared to die? Then if that's okay, then, then you know, you're a candidate for going. <laughs> Shama, I mean, he's, he wants to do this. The thing is, there are people who want to do everything, right? Mm -hmm. right. So I don't think he's going to have trouble finding 100 people who don't mind risking their life. But That's why the, do they want to go to Mars? That is the easy part, right? This is such a bold PR move because chances of this actually happening in our lifetime, so nil. So nil. Really? But who's going to go out there? I mean, he's trying to raise money. Yeah. Anybody who's raised money from a tech perspective knows you need bold promises, right? And so this is a bold promise. Humanize Mars. People will talk about it. If he says, I want to do some research on Mars, figure out what minerals we can mine, right? That's not a great story. I see. This is it. There's always a marketing angle to everything, right? Is it a crime to mispronounce someone's name? No, but it should be. The story next. Inviting someone to play golf, asking someone, can I touch your hair? Telling a woman in leadership, I love your shoes. I think we all know what these are. Well, now we can finally add something to that almost offensively short list of microaggressions. Mispronouncing someone's name. According to a campaign launched in 2015 by the school district in Santa Clara, California, and the National Association for Bilingual Education, mispronouncing a student's name can cause anxiety and resentment. When the child enters school and teachers, consciously or unconsciously, uh, mispronounce, disregard, or change the name, they are, in a sense, disregarding the family and culture of the students as well, said University of California education professor Rita Kahali. <laughs> Mispronouncing a student's name truly negates his or her identity, which in turn can hinder academic progress. This according to another educator, Yi Wan. Other experts agree on her blog uh, called Cult of Pedagogy. Former teacher Jennifer John Zales <laughs> claimed that mutilating someone's name is a tiny act of bigotry. Whether you intend to or not, what you're communicating is this. Your name is different, foreign, weird. If you want to learn more about the campaign, you can go to their website, mynamemeidentity.org. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but they're doing great work. Okay, Shama, I almost didn't do this story because uh, because of your name. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought it's we're gonna weird and foreign and different. <laughs> it yeah, is a, it is a little different. Above. It's different, but I like it. And Thanks. I like the process of learning it. Like, I probably would have called you Shama or Shama because it's, it's... I've it's heard like, it both ways. Yes, but it's, it's kind of like Shama, right? It's Shama. Mm -hmm. Shama. Yeah, that's uh, right. See, I like it. I like figuring out your name. I like you correcting me. I think it's fantastic. I will tell you, <laughs> Tom, that... Throughout school, right, I've had it mispronounced more than Mississippi is misspelled. Like, my name's just one of those things, but I can promise you that I never felt like it was an act of exactly. bigotry. A man in El Salvador says God told him to start digging a hole 18 years ago, and he hasn't stopped since. 
Santiago Sanchez spends every waking hour digging. He excavates about 90 pounds of rocks a day. The 69-year-old sees it as the Lord's work. Although he is a little selfish, telling a reporter, quote, only I am allowed to go to the end because I am God's tunnel digger. Anybody else is, uh, nobody else is allowed to go there. Here's footage of Sanchez digging. <laughs> I think that was a, a computerized simulation uh, yeah. of Sanchez yeah. digging. Uh, Schultz, what yeah. do you think? Uh, the man's digging a hole. What's his reason? Um, I, I don't think he, there's a hole. What? <laughs> I just don't believe him. You don't believe him? Yeah, because I was thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Not required. I, I, got, you the, did I got the thinking, Tom. Yeah. And uh, what happens when it rains? It, it uh, fills with water. What does the water just dry up? I think it does. It probably sinks into the dirt. Yeah. No, it doesn't. What? doesn't sink into the dirt. It, <laughs> it would just sit there like a well. That's what it would do. What is this super absorbent dirt? You're right. I don't know. <laughs> what, Shama. Sham wow dirt out what? there in what? El Salvador? Shaman knows about these things. Is it super absorbent dirt? I think it's super absorbent dirt. And I think we should introduce him to Elon Musk. Don't you think Elon Musk could put him to good use? Oh. You're right. He's a right? dreamer. Absolutely. Yeah, like it's a great combination. How has he not found a dinosaur? <laughs> He should. These are questions that you got to ask. But Nobody's asking these questions. Only we ask we'll them. Thank you very anything. much to my whole panel. Good night.